Hello and welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. My name is Joris and today I am here with a video about the fire movement. And you can see the title, it's playing with fire but don't get burned because yeah, I think the fire movement is really important in the world of finance and especially for me, I like the fire movement but I think they took it too far and okay, they are dialing it back now but I'm just warning you that when you want to reach fire that you shouldn't overdo it so that you don't get burned. But first off, what is fire exactly? Well, it stands for Financial Independence Retire Early. And the movement actually started with a book by Joseph Dominguez and Vicky Robin in 1992. They wrote a book, Your Money or Your Life transforming your relationship with money and achieving financial independence. In 2008, they had a revised edition and there it read as subtitle Nine Steps to Transforming Your Relationship with Money and Achieving Financial Independence. It's a really great book. I can recommend both. I like the first one more. The, there are people that like the, the second one more, so the re revised edition. But I must say that I, I like always the original books more. But yeah, sometimes you can't find it. But it's it's uh, for sale on Amazon for about three bucks. So you can, you can find it there. And they lay out the principles for reaching fire. And that is to learn about personal finance. And for reaching fire, you should track your expenses and your income. And when you do that, they tell you to cut unnecessary spending and find cost-effective effective alternatives. So you should try to live as frugal as possible so that you can save as much as possible. And that saving part is, of course, really important. I always stress it as well, as well in my videos. And saving is really hard. And here in this movement, they really want you to have a high savings rate. So when you have a high savings rate, you can of course also invest a lot of money. And if you invest that into assets, and that's not only stocks, you can also invest in real estate, so in houses and stuff. But then the question remains, how passive your income stream really is in, in that regards? Because yeah, renting out properties that demands a lot of work in fact so is that really passive also for a portfolio of stocks is it really passive because you need to keep track of your companies and even if you invest in ETFs is it really passive when you need to sell every year a part of your portfolio maybe you need to reallocate money from certain ETFs because the ETFs aren't as big as the company wants. They throw them together with another ETF. Then the investment philosophy of the new ETF where your money went to isn't to your liking. So you have to sell that ETF and buy another one. It's I, I put passive between parentheses because I still think that real passive income doesn't exist. Also, people that say that when they earn money from uh, their videos on YouTube, I put a lot of effort in my videos on YouTube that I post. So, yeah, that's not really passive. Okay, once your video is on YouTube and it gathers more and more views, it goes automatically, but you need to make your videos first as well. So it's it's a it's a, a crazy thing, the, the passive, always seeing uh, passive before an income stream. But okay, that's, that's another discussion, of course. You have also certain calculations that you need to do in order to know whether or not you can go into a fire situation or if you can reach the, the fire uh, point. And first off is knowing your annual expenses. And it's really easy, of course. You do your budgeting, you calculate your monthly expenses, you multiply that with 12, 
and you have your annual expenses so so far pretty easy but then the fire number there you need to do your annual expenses times 25 25 comes from the 4% rule from uh, the safe withdrawal rate from the Trinity study I'm going to mention it uh, a little bit later and if you think about it here you have monthly expenses times 12 which gives you uh, the annual expenses so when you replace that by, by that you can do 12 times 25 and that gives you your monthly expenses times 300 and you have your amount that you need to have invested in order to be able to live passively from your assets and that's the safe withdrawal rate that was uh, calculated in the Trinity study but actually the Trinity study was for people that went into retirement on the normal retirement age so 60 up to 65 and they lived for eh, more or less 30 years from their saved up money and they withdrew then 4% every year from that portfolio and in only 1.2% of the cases it failed so most of the time 4% was truly a safe withdrawal rate for that 30 year period but in some hey, when they start in a certain year and especially when the year that they start it was a terrible year on the stock market then it there was a risk that the yeah the the money that was gathered wasn't enough to to have uh, to to be able to live for 30 years from your initial investment so the book book was published in 1992 the trinity study was published in 1998 so yeah the the factor of 25 wasn't known in the year of 1992 but a lot of people picked it up especially mr money mustache and they included it into the the fire movement and now it's uh, more or less fixed and everybody knew knows the the factor of 25 and also the factor of 300 so if you want to calculate your own fire number just take your monthly expenses and multiply it by 300 and you know the amount that you need to have saved up in order to be able to retire another important calculation for the fire movement is the time to reach your fire amount and therefore you have to do a little bit more complicated uh, calculation and that's the the logarithm of the fire number divided by the current saving that you have and that divide, divided by the logarithm of 1 plus the annual savings rate so the higher your savings rate the lower your time to reach fire will be and that's why in the fire movement they really want you to be frugal and save as much as possible and even they they speak even about savings rates of up to 70 percent for me that's crazy i don't uh, get there at all and i think a lot of people don't get there at all as well so it is just a formula to help you to estimate how many years it will take you to reach your fire number so when you put your current numbers into it uh, you you can uh, maybe find out that you need to work until your retirement age but for me that's not a problem so when I do that I need to work until my 58 to reach the the fire number and I will be happy then of course but I will be happy as well to to work until my legal retirement age and I will retire a happy person then as well and good sources of info for the fire movement are in the first place the books of course so you have your money or your life 
I already mentioned uh, the, the book from Joseph Dominguez and Vicky Robin. But you also have The Simple Path to Wealth from GL Collins. And you also have the Financially Lit book by Yanis Torres. And that's more for Latin America, but I really like her blog. She has really great articles, just like Mr. Money Moustache. And you see Mr. Money Moustache here on the cover. You see Mr. Money Moustache here on this cover. So that's one of the guys that uh, started early. He retired on a really young age as well, but he gives a lot of talks and he can uh, he's really good with with his pen and he's really good with uh, with how he talks as well so you can look him up on uh, youtube as well he he turns up in a, in a couple of videos and those videos are pretty good as well you have the blocks for sure the one from mr money mustache you have retired by 40 you have millennial money you have the mad scientist and then from Yanis Torres, you have Yo Quiero Dinero. So here I have a typing error. I'm, I'm sorry for that, Yanis Torres. Uh, they also, th those two oval have also a podcast. So Matt Fientist and Yo Quiero Dinero. And then you have podcast and YouTube, Chill, Choose FI, Nerd Wallet, The Money Guy Show, and The Slot Investor. This last one isn't really financial independence retire early, but more about uh, the simple path to wealth. So the S stands for simplicity and I like his podcast. So I just wanted to put him here. And when you have Spotify, you can look him up and uh, listen to his podcast. I think when you listen to him for an hour every day after yeah in a good month you are you have listened to all this podcast and uh, you you learned a great deal and then the best things about fire first off if you look at the previous slides this community is really helpful and it, and it is open as well and then the first principle of the fire movement is to learn about personal finance and I really like that about the fire movement because yeah I found out about about personal finance through the book of uh, Roland van der Elst about winning with stocks and then there was uh, the book of Paul Dorn it was a journalist and he wrote a book about uh, investing and then the the newspaper, the Financiel Economische Tijd in Belgium, they also published the Beursbijbel. So that was a great initiative uh, from the, the newspaper. But in school, if you think about it, you don't learn how you need to go around to deal with money. So you go to school, you learn a lot of things, you learn a profession, and then you go and do that profession. You earn money, but you don't know what is awaiting you. You don't know what fixed costs you will have. You don't know which bills are going to come. You don't know how much the electricity costs. You don't know how, how much food costs, in fact, because you, you lived uh, at your parents' house or something like that. So you don't know what taxes you how you need to fill in your taxes they don't learn you a thing in school and that is where you can learn a lot from the fire movement from reading the blogs from reading the tips that they give it's amazing this community and okay this means that they put less emphasis on spending and more on saving and investing but in my eyes that's great because yeah you know my my videos i always say saving is hard and investing and saving is key to to living a great life later on in life and that's also what the fire movement says so that's what they want to achieve so they want to retire early so that they can enjoy life 
But the problems with fire is, in the first place, the frugality. So savings rates of 60-70% for a lot of people, that is truly crazy. But yeah, some people can do that. And you can cut back on spending and uh, reduce your monthly expenses to save as much as possible. So it's one of their principles. But you have to think about it in what way you reduce your monthly expenses. So a lot of people say a savings rate of 10 up to 15% is great. I also believe that that is great. And if you achieve that already, that's truly amazing. But in this movement, they want you to reach 50, 60, 70%. And that is really, yeah, it's, it's not living anymore for me. So, and then you have the problem that when you live for five, six years on a monthly expense ratio of half of what you normally would spend and what you believe is actually a normal life that when you calculate your fine number and you calculate it with your reduced monthly expense that your fine number is actually pretty low compared to what it should be with your normal expenses so when you then use that reduced monthly expenses for your fine number you have to realize that you have to live for the rest of your life on that low amount. So when you cut back your yearly expenses of, from 50,000 to 25,000 and you calculate with the 25,000, you have to live for the rest of your life with 25,000 a year to, in order to be able to retire according to the FIRE movement. And if you calculate it with the 50,000 monthly expenses, then you have to do it for a longer time. So live frugally on 25,000, you have to do it for a longer time. Okay, with the compounding effect, it will take less time to reach your 50,000 as uh, your 4% safe withdrawal rate compared to the time it took you to reach the 25,000 because you have the compounding of your, of your interest, of course. But for a lot of people, it's really annoying that when they realize that they actually don't want to live for the rest of their, their lives on that lower expense ratio uh, or that, that lower monthly expense, that then they, they realize, damn, now I actually have to save longer and I have to still live frugally in this way for one year, two years, three years longer and they don't want to do that and then they stop with the, with the fire movement altogether. Some people, they can do that. I will, have, uh, I will talk about that later. But you also have to realize that when you are going on in your life and you start with the fire movement when you are 20 and then you meet your future wife when you are 22 and then you start with children when you are 27 28 when children come into play you will have higher monthly expenses you have to buy diapers you have to buy clothes you have to buy more food uh, and everybody knows what they say every child costs you a house and that's true. I have three children. They cost me a lot of money, but they bring me a lot of joy as well. And then you have the problem with the retirement. So when you look at the movement, you see all those bloggers, all those authors, all those podcasters, all those YouTubers are talking about how they reached fire. And then you are looking at them and you say, hey, but you are in fact still working because you are still blogging, you are still coming onto YouTube, you are still making videos, you are also going to, to shows and uh, talk there. So then you have to keep in the back of your head, okay, they still work, but they work way less than they did before. 
and they probably also enjoy what they are doing now more than the job that they were doing before and for a lot of people they can't combine those two things and that gives the impression that fire actually doesn't work but believe me there are a lot of people that really reach the fire and are really retired and aren't working anymore they are just living from the money that their portfolio is bringing them but yeah that's that's just uh, what I want to say about the thing with the retirement so it gives the wrong impression about the fire movement and by doing so the fire movement is actually yeah decreasing a lot in popularity and a lot of people in the fire community are noticing that that the fire community isn't that active anymore as before and that's why they are changing their narrative a bit and that is why you are you are hearing now about a lot of different types of fire so you still have the standard fire types so you have the regular fire so what I was talking about before so first living as frugal as you can and then regular spending after you are retired and I put it between parentheses because I think it's really important that you understand that people that say that they are retired they actually mean that they are working to their liking then you have lean fire and that is for people that really enjoy living frugally so they live really frugal with a with a savings rate of 60 70 percent with only a monthly expense of uh, a yearly expense of 20 25 thousand a year and after they achieve their fire number for 25,000 in yearly expenses they just keep on living like that and they are completely happy for people that want to have regular fire they live frugally until they reach the point where they can have the regular spending the normal spending that they had before they start living frugally and then you have fat fire and that is fire for people that want to enjoy life to the full and they want the best of the best all the time they want to make a trip and they go to the best uh, hotels they they fly first class they just yeah they want to enjoy life like it's meant to be according to them and for doing that they save a lot of money but truly a lot they sacrifice a lot some people don't need to sacrifice a lot because they are born in the right circumstances they they are born rich let's say but still they for a moment in time they lived really frugally so that they accumulated the money that they needed in order that they could live later on the royal life that they that they want and then you have the new types of uh, the road to fire types and i call it more the road to retirement types and you have coast fire and here you live frugal and save as much as possible in the beginning of your career and let that investment i uh, invested money compound without touching it until you retire and then you know that you will live a comfortable life after the the time that you retire at your legal retirement age so it's actually yeah with a, a period of 30 40 years in between you have delayed gratification so you really need to be patient when you do the coast fire and a lot of people can't do that 
and that's why you also have barista fire and this is you can first do the cost fire thing and then after for example letting your money accumulate for 10 years and you're 35 years old so from 20 to 25 you do the the frugal living and save as much as possible and invest as much as possible 10 years later you decide okay now i'm going to start enjoying the dividends that come on in from my dividend portfolio and i will take a break from my work uh, or i will go and work for 80 percent at my work to to bring more time with my children and that is barista fire and then you also have slow fi so here you see the retirement early is actually gone and that's also one of the crazy things that I think in the FIRE movement is that in the original book of your life or your money, it says the path to financial independence. And here you have again slow financial independence, so reaching slow financial independence. And that is what I am actually doing and that is while you work you accumulate assets and feel better and better as you know that you are less and less dependent on your income from your job. And at one time it can be that you reach the point that you don't longer need to go and work but you still enjoy working and yeah that's that's uh, actually where I am. I'm, I like working. So when I am in my slow FI journey and in about yeah when I'm 58 normally according to my fire calculations I will reach the point where I can go and retire early I will not do it I will keep on working but I will have the mindset of when tomorrow they fire me it doesn't matter anymore because I have money enough I have saved enough I have invested enough and I don't longer care and that is what they call then fuck you money so excuse me for my language there but that's that's how they call it so F you money and this is why I do dividend investing so and if you think about it so you have the fire number and that is monthly expenses times 300 and you can recognize my rule of 300 in it so with the fire movement it's 12 times 25 and that's an uh, coincidence because you have the 4% safe withdrawal rate from the Trinity study but for me it is when I invest 300 Swiss francs and I get 4% dividend yield that gives me 1 Swiss francs per month from my 300 Swiss franc that I invest so for the amount that I want in desired dividend per month, I have to multiply that with 300 and then I have the total portfolio number that I need to reach. And as you know, it's uh, what I first want to reach is 1,050,000 Swiss francs so that, uh, that we get 3,500 Swiss francs per month in dividends because that covers our monthly necessity expenses and when we reach that point I will be so happy because then I know that uh, yeah we can live frugally on 3500 Swiss francs per month until we retire then so in in that way reaching the 3500 Swiss francs per month is my reaching the point of FU money and yeah that's that's uh, one of the the great things that that I want want to uh, reach so yeah I use my rule of 300 to know how much I need to accumulate in order to receive enough dividends and that is just what slow fi is so and it's also what most people can do so 
I think the fire movement after accelerating a little bit too quick it mo it slowed down again and I think that's a really good thing for the fire movement and because life is more than saving so living frugally it is good for a certain amount of, of time but you can't live frugally for the rest of your life and cutting back on uh, expenses it's it's okay for maybe one percent or two percent of people in the world but for 98 percent of the people it doesn't work and i hope that with the, the videos that i make i also educate people a little bit i try to include as much information as i can in uh, the videos that i make and I hope that you learn how to deal with money that you receive and I hope that you understand that saving money and investing money is key for your future, maybe also for the future of your kids. And with that being said, I thank you for watching. To this video, please consider subscribing to my YouTube uh, channel. Hitting that like button helps out the channel enormously because it distributes then this video to people that also like this kind of content. And with that being said, thank you for watching and see you on the next one. Bye.